Welcome back. You're still tuned in to the Health Matters on CNBC TV 18. We're discussing nutrition. Uh, well, Dr. Shivdasani, uh, you know, I wanted to get your thoughts on migraines and diet. What's the connection? And do you think migraines can be controlled with a diet? To a huge extent, absolutely. So water plays a big role. Hydration is key. And most of us are, you know, um, we, we don't drink enough water, especially when we're sitting in air conditioned And how much rooms. water should we drink, actually? Should it be in glasses? Uh, no. I always tell my patients, look at the color of your urine. Mm -hmm. And that will be your best indicator. See, someone might have a kidney disease. Someone might have, you know, other issues. You might be working out more than me. So just to say that eight glasses, nine glasses, it's not a universal answer. Look at the color of your urine. If the color of your urine is pale white, closer to a whitish color, that's, that means you're well hydrated. Okay. But if it's very concentrated, deep yellow, that means you're dehydrated. Okay. Now getting back to migraine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you need to have enough water, hydrate well. You need to make sure you've got enough iron. A lot of women with iron deficiency get migraines. Now, remember, iron is not the same as hemoglobin. You can have a normal hemoglobin report, but you can still be very low in iron, so that's important to test. And then, of course, we give them foods that are rich in iron. Sometimes we need to supplement with medication also for that, but that is probably the commonest cause, as is magnesium deficiency. So we, we test it, and if you're low in magnesium, then we, we prescribe a lot of green leafy vegetables, which are high in magnesium, especially because they're chelated and they get chlorophyll. Mm. So they're really high in magnesium. So you include that. I like the use of omega-3 because it's usually anti-inflammatory, so that helps. So whether you're doing it through a supplement or diet where you're going to eat lots of nuts and seeds and um, you know fatty fish, that really helps with migraines also. Okay. All right. Dr. Candy, uh, you know, what is the connection between diet and nutrition and cancer? For example, do you recommend people who are diagnosed with cancer to look at a diet which is specific to them? Yes, so we do look at an anti-inflammatory diet. And this diet contains a lot of uh, phytonutrients as well as antioxidants. So we look at the specificity of getting good amount of antioxidants in the diet, especially because uh, if they're undergoing any treatments such as chemotherapy, radiation, and any other uh, cancer treatments, uh, fruits that are rich in fruits, vegetables, seeds, as well as good amount of fiber is very important for them. Uh, however, we also look at certain herbs and uh, homemade ingredients uh, uh, such as, you know, tulsi, basil, uh, jeera and our own very kitchen herbs, which are also very good in uh, a lot of other anti-cancer uh, agents. So we do recommend an anti-inflammatory diet in these cases. What is the advantage of IF? You name me the organ of the body and there is an advantage to IF. I mean, there is uh, whether it's to... And this is for NCDs as well? Um, if you're looking at, see, I'll tell you, any NCD, which is a hormonal NCD, mm -hmm. you have to, have to do intermittent fasting under guidance. Else it will backfire, and that's what gives IF a bad name. But it's not the intermittent, it's not the fasting. Fasting of any sort, whether it's intermittent, whether it's time-restricted, that's the study talks about, whether it's a 5-2, there are 20 different kinds of fasting. Whatever fasting you do, the reason fasting gets a bad name because it's done badly. So when you talk about NCDs, when you talk about diabetes, thyroid, these kind of things, if you're not going to do it under guidance, of course it's going to backfire. But why are you blaming the diet? You blame the way you're doing it because you're doing it incorrectly. Okay. But if you talk about brain health, you talk about gut health, you talk about not weight loss but fat loss, you talk about cholesterols, you talk about sugar control, there is nothing that IF doesn't help with. Dr. Candy, uh, you know, what would the ideal Indian diet be? Okay. So uh, when I prescribe an Indian diet to... Uh, Anybody who comes to me, whether it's a patient or a person who is for wellness, I ask them to choose an order of eating. So in an order of eating, I ask them to eat their fibers first. So if you see fibers first, second is protein, and last is your carbs. That's how you can choose your diet. You also divide your plate in this fashion. So if you see your lunch plate will have fibers first, would be either a vegetable from your salad or a soup, or from your sabzi that is cooked. You can choose proteins from vegetarian as well as non-vegetarian source like a curd or a paneer and the non-vegetarian source from an egg or a chicken or a fish. Uh, then comes with your carbs, 
these days there's a lot of popularity for millets and I agree that millets is a very good choice to make so mm. you can make so many things out of millets so maybe one fourth of your plate can be millets yeah and the rest can be uh, your fruits and or vegetables or fiber or you know like a curd or a chas you can have that okay all right we're going to end this show by asking you a couple of rapid fire questions so we just want a quick answer to them I'll start with you Dr. Candy are white rice potatoes and bread bad for you no, it's not bad for you if you add adequate fiber to it. Okay. Are the yellows of eggs good or bad? It's not bad at all. In fact, it has phospholipids, it has got vitamin K2, and it has got so many other nutrients which are good for you. Okay. Is milk good or bad for children? It's not bad at all. It's a good source of calcium, phosphorus, and magnesium. All right. Dr. Vishaka, superfoods, do they exist or is it just a marketing gimmick? If 80% of your diet is clean, then the addition of superfoods will hugely help. But if your diet is crap, throw the superfoods. It's not going to make any difference to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And which is the best superfood? Uh, I like mushrooms because it really helps cognition, helps as a prebiotic. Black coffee is great if you stick with one cup. So turmeric, black pepper is also great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Dr. Vishaka, how many fruits should we consume in a day? Um, you can do two or three if you don't have a metabolic problem, but if you've got any of the sugars, insulin resistance, etc., then stick with zero to one. Foods high in vitamin D3 as well as B12. Virtually no foods are high in D3, except some um, small quantity maybe in some fatty fish and egg yolk. You need to get it through sunlight or a supplement. Uh, B12, all your protein sources have, are high in B12, especially the non-vegetarian proteins. And the vegetarian proteins are nuts and seeds and uh, mushrooms. Okay, well, Dr. Vishaka, how important is proteins for women? And should it be consumed only if you're working out? Absolutely not. A woman requires protein. After, after 40, we lose 3 to 5% of muscle mass and we get sarcopenia per decade. So whether you lift weights or not, it's your currency to longevity. So you need to, to include lots of protein, irrespective of workout. Sources of proteins for vegetarians. Oh, lots of them. Nuts, seeds, uh, paneer, tofu, lentils, sprouts especially. So lots of, uh, you know, sources, all forms of soya also. Okay, they are right. Dr. Candy as well as Dr. Vishaka, thank you very much for joining in and providing your insights when it comes to nutrition. Thanks very much for watching and do stay tuned for more. Thank you. Thank you.